Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, my friends. It's your faith coach, your faith and victory coach, Anna Marie, and I'm so excited to see you guys tonight. We are back on track with our weekly Bible study, our Sunday night Bible study. And this is going to be a really great class tonight because I feel like a lot of us deal with a situation if an opportunity uh, is being presented to us or an opportunity shows up at our door or shows up into our situation, how do we know that it's a good opportunity? How do we know that this opportunity is from God? Um, how do we know that um, a certain person or a certain situation uh, that kind of shows up suddenly in your in your life is part of God's plan for your life, um, or if it is what it seems to be. You know, they always, what's the old saying? If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Or, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, but, you know, use use good judgment, use good judgment before you go into things like look for red flags and things like that. So, <clears throat> Today, I am going to, uh, we're going to be reading Joshua chapter 9. We are in Joshua chapter 9 in the Bible. Um, I am reading from um, the NIV version on uh, the online version. So if you go to um, BibleGateway.com, uh, the NIV version of Joshua chapter 9, uh, you can follow along with me. But uh, I just kind of want to get everybody in here and get you in the chat. Um, I want to know where you're from, where, where you're watching from tonight. I uh, really want to be interactive with you guys. We're going to have a prayer at the end of this. I'm going to really uh, give you a powerful decree about um, really good, positive things coming into your life um, and for God to give you uh, great discernment on these things to know that uh, the situations that are presenting themselves to you, if they are, are not from God. So uh, I know that's a big question that a lot of you have. You know, a lot of you are seeking clarity or a lot of you want to know if these, the situation you're in right now is, is, is good for the overall plan that God has for you and um, if the people around you or the people you're working with um, are are part of the plan or if you need to be moving forward from them so this is going to be a really eye-opening class so please share this up share it on your page we need to get as many people in here joining the chat I know there's going to be some really good nuggets in here for a lot of people tonight, some really good answers. And when I was reading the chapter this morning, I really felt like I got just some really good revelation that I put into some notes for you guys. So I really want to encourage you, uh, if you've got your Bibles out, uh, if you've got your, your paper Bibles out and not your online, there goes my highlighter. <laughs> I, I, I said, I said, this is, this is one of those nights that you want to highlight some things on the pages and then my highlighter just falls on the floor. Um, so yeah, you know, take notes, get your highlighter out because this is something that you are going to return to over and over and over again when you're trying to uh, make a decision on something or discern a situation, if it's good, bad, or ugly. So um, I want to encourage you all to grab a notebook. Uh, grab your Bible if you're online, you know, get your highlighter, get your, your notes area open on your computer so that you can copy paste some things in because I'm telling you this is something that you are going to want to revisit uh, as you move into your journey, into your promised land, into your um, uh, goals and in dreams because these are things that um, God is showing us that happen to every single one of us. Um, and it's going to be a great answer that many of you are seeking tonight. So let me grab my highlighter. Hang on one second. Okay. That gave you guys a minute to uh, get in the chat. Where are y'all coming from tonight? Where are y'all watching from tonight? Um, let me get where I can see everybody. And, um, so tell me, uh, I'll tell you what, it's been very, very hot here in Virginia Beach uh, here in June, and um, it, we have had some really hot weather. Thank goodness for air conditioning. So if you're watching from a nice uh, air-conditioned 
area and you're staying cool and uh, putting your feet up with a nice uh, cold drink, this is this is the the night to really get in and, and relax and do some studying. Of course, this will be recorded. We'll also have it up on my YouTube channel, um, uh, Anna Marie Strawhand, Life in the Faith Lane TV on YouTube, or you can always go to my website, AnnaMarieStrawhand.com, and just click on the icons for YouTube and go straight to the recordings. Uh, I've got them on a nice playlist, so if you miss any of the Book of Joshua teachings, you can go back, pick up nuggets from each one of those teachings, um, and it'll be up there for you to um get to anytime you want. Okay. So I'm going to start the timer and we're going to start teaching. So anyway, so listen, guys, let's get in there. Let's get in the chat. Um, let me see where you're coming from. I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat to see, uh, if you have any questions, we're going to stop in between the teaching and check out some of your questions tonight. Okay. So let's dig right in Joshua nine. The Gibeonite deception now, when all the kings west of the Jordan heard about these things, the kings in the hill country, in the western foothills, and all along the entire co coast of the Mediterranean Sea, as far as Lebanon, the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, all those ites, they came together to wage war against Joshua and Israel. However... When the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they resorted to a ruse. They went as a delegate, delegation whose donkeys were loaded with worn out sacks and old wineskins, cracked and mended. They put on worn and patched sandals on their feet and wore old clothes. All the bread of their food so, supply was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal and said to him and the Israelites, we have come from a distant country, make a treaty with us. But, and then the Israelites said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us. So how can we make a treaty with you? Oh, we are your servants. They said to Joshua, but Joshua asks, who are you and where do you come from? They answered, Oh, your servants have come from a very distant country because of the fame of the Lord, your God. We have heard reports of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, Sihon king in Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan who reigned in Ashroth. And our elders and all those living in our country said to us, Take provisions for your journey and go meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we packed it at home on the day we left to come to you. But see how dry and moldy it is. And these wineskins that were filled with new were new, but see how cracked they are. And our clothes and sandals are worn out by the very long journey. Well, the Israelites sampled their provisions, looked over all the provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live, and the leaders of the, assemb leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. Now, my friends, okay, this... <laughs> This Gibeonite deception, these people, they had heard about Joshua and, and they knew that the Israelites were coming for them, that, that God was with them and was conquering these cities one after another because these people, these people were literally squatters on the land that was promised to Israel. These people were squatters on the land that was promised to Israel and God was bringing the Israelites back into the land that was promised to them, the land of milk and honey, but they needed to fight these people, destroy them, destroy their cities so that it could become their land again, belonging to the Israelites. Now, I want you guys to understand something. There's a lot of things going on right now in, in, uh, in the news right now. Uh, when you look at um, the deception that the Gibeonites have done all right where they they made themselves look really 
really ragged and really poor, like, like they took a long journey. Oh, feel sorry for us. Take pity on us. They devised a deception. They devised a deception. You know, there's a lot of things going on right now um, with refugees coming into our country. And do are they really in need of refuge? Are they really in need? You know, are they are they in need of um, uh, asylum? Is the word I want to say. So you know, we're finding out that some of these people uh, are actually being coached by by lawyers, and you know, so you don't know what to believe. You don't know what to believe. Are they really uh, poor and ragged and 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 in in, in need of an of asylum? Or you know, because we we've heard that you know America is prosperous and where we are, you know, it, it's terrible. So you know, Joshua it was a brilliant leader. Joshua had a lot of wisdom. Okay. But he didn't even see the deception that the Gibeonites were doing. Okay. The Gibeonites knew that, um, God was behind all the power that the Israelites had and they were destroying things and, 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 and taking all destroying and, and, and taking all of the wealth of those, of those cities. And God was using it as the provision for the Israelites as they moved on into the promised land. And here's the thing. Okay. I want you guys to understand. All right. How does this go into your life? All right. How does this go into your life? Now, here's what I want to tell you. The, the enemy, the devil is very crafty. Okay. You know, there were other other cities, and that it says in the beginning of this chapter that they just all out combined together, and they were just going to rage war, flat out war against Joshua and the Israelites. Okay, but these Gibeonites they devised a deceptive plan. They they were they were right next door, basically, uh, to where Joshua and the Israelites were camped. Okay. And they probably figured out, Hey, you know, we're next in line. You know, they're probably going to just come in and pretty much wipe us out and take everything. So let's make ourselves look like we came from really far away and, um, you know, make our clothes look terrible and our sandals worn out and make our, you know, take, take what bread we have, which is, which is, you know, all moldy and, you know, make it look old. And then we're going to sell them, you know, on this, we're going to go and we're going to sell them on this and make them feel sorry for us. And, you know, take us into their prosperity, take us into their prosperity. We want to hook onto their coattails. Okay. Now here's what I want to tell you. The key thing in this verse that you guys need to look at, okay, is you're going to have a lot of deceptive things come at you while you are going for your promise. If, if God has promised you something and you're going for a big goal and you're going for that big promise and you are, you are coming close to that promise and, and you were, the Lord's giving you victory after victory after victory, you know, and, and you're, you are really starting to prosper. You are really starting to prosper. People around you are going to see that. Now there's either two things that are going to happen. They're going to be either really jealous of you and they're going to try, try to fight against you. Okay. Like the other big cities just decided to devise armies against them, or they're going to be, there might be some sneaky deception like, Ooh, Hey, I want to latch on to their, their prosperity. I want to latch on to their coattails. I want to worm my way in there, you know, to, to, to get, a hold of what that person's got, you know, and I'm going to sell them a bill, bill of goods. I'm going to go and make them feel sorry for me and deceive them into, you know, taking me into their, into their camp, into their prosperity, you know, so I can, I can have that too, without having to work for it, without having to have faith for it, without having to, right. So maybe this has happened to a lot of you. You know, a lot of us pray, Lord, you know, bring the right people in, bring the right opportunities in, bring the right situations in, open up the right doors for me. Okay. 
And sometimes the enemy will throw a deception at you because you're so eager to move forward and you're just, you're just rocking your, the train's moving, baby. And you're just going, 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 going. Right. And all of a sudden something comes in front of you and you're going, Hmm, is that from God or is it not? And this is what I want to tell you guys today. How do we know? You know, these people completely tricked Joshua and Joshua was having close conversations with the Lord. But here's the key thing. What didn't the Israelites do? What didn't they do? They were, it says right here. Okay. They looked at their stuff. They looked at them, right? They were just kind of like looking at it, like at face value. All right. Oh, yeah. Look at these poor people. Yeah. They must be telling the truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the verse says the Israelites did not inquire of God. I mean, come on. God has been fighting their battles for them, keeping the enemy out of their way, giving them the plunder, moving them forward in the promised land. And all of a sudden, these people show up in their camp out of the blue and says, say all this stuff to them, and they they just take it at face value? Like, okay, all right, well, we'll just make a deal with you. They did not inquire of God first. Look, I've made this mistake. <laughs> We're an opportunity, because I'm like, go, 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 you know? And um, I've jumped into things really fast because, hey, this looks, this looks right. This looks good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. This looks good. This, you know, I'm going to hook up with this person because this looks good. This looks right. Right. I'm going to do this situation because, yeah, the opportunity presented itself. I'm going to just going to jump right in there. Okay. And I've done it without really inquiring of God and making sure that this is part of his plan. This, that he brought this situation. Okay. Because it's going to come back and bite you in the rear end, trust me, (laughs) if you don't inquire of God. Listen, I'm writing a book called Faith at Full Speed, right? How to reach your goals and dreams at record speed. And one of the things, because I know people are impatient. I'm impatient. I worked in motorsports for years. I worked with the most impatient people in the world, race car drivers, okay? (laughs) Trust me, they've got got the attention span of like three seconds, okay? (laughs) So as a coach, I had to help them, right, when when a, a opportunity presented themselves, to give it that time to talk it over with God and know if it's the right situation for them, you know, to just take a moment and wait. You know, how many of us have been impulsive with situations and have just taken them at face value? Okay, maybe it's you. Okay, let's look in the chat and see if anybody's had this situation. How's everybody doing tonight? Can y'all hear me okay? I hope so. I hope everyone can hear me okay. So jump in here, invite invite your friends. I'd love for you guys to let me know where you're watching from. And uh, I hope that you've got, we're getting a really good signal tonight because we have a new modem and I just want to make sure that the sound is coming through really good for you guys. Okay, so we're going to keep teaching. Um, Have you ever been in a situation where something looked like it was really good on the outside, you know, being sold a bill of goods. You know, I was in sales for many, many years and, you know, you were playing on people's emotions is one of the biggest things in sales. And this is what the Gib- Gibeonites did. They played on the emotions of the Israelites. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy will put things in your path as you are on your way to your promise, especially when you're gaining momentum and God is really prospering you. He will put situations in your path. He will, he will put people, he will put, uh, many, many different things, many deceptive situations in your path that look really good from the outside. They look like they're from God, but they're not. Okay. And here's the thing, you know, um, as we know from God's word, okay. And this is how God does things. Okay. God does things. If you look at, um, Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, 7, which is actually my daughter's favorite Bible verse for the Lord sees not as a man sees for, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Okay. 
So you got to understand that you got to get to the heart of a matter. You know, I think Joshua tried to touch upon it, but he really didn't get to the heart of the matter of this situation and um, really dig into what the purpose was and where these people really came from and what they were looking to do. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really important thing for all of us to understand that, you know, we could, we could feel like we are the most seasoned um, uh, people in, in our journey, you know, and that we are just in line with God and we are just flowing right along. Okay. But just one thing. And if we don't inquire of the Lord could trip us up. So, you know, one of the things that I talk about in, in my book, um, faith at full speed is understanding that sometimes you have got to gear it down, like rein in that racehorse. All right. You got to gear it down a little bit. You can't be wide open. You can't be wide open all the time. Wide open, wide open, wide open. All right. Because this is a, this is a long race and you want to finish it strong and you want to finish it with wisdom. You know, in racing, we, we always say, you know, you want to save your tires. You don't want to tear them up. Okay. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to pass, pass the the cars too fast because you're going to, you're going to tear up your tires. And, you know, we always say you don't want to win the race in the first lap. Okay. This is, this is something that you've got to really use wisdom. Okay. And you got to know your opposition. You got to know your opposition. Okay. Because sometimes we say slow is fast. You know, I think about, you know, reining in those racehorses a little bit, right? You know, so they don't wear themselves out in the beginning of the race. And then they, you know, slowly let the rain out, slowly let that rain out and just, you know, and, and God has shown me that many, many times. All right. <clears throat> so Joshua said to them after the Israelites sampled their provisions and he made a treaty with them, uh, a peace treaty for them to let them live with them. And they made an oath together. And, you know, we all know from reading these other chapters in Joshua, how important um, these oaths and these covenants are. Uh, not just they learn that the covenants and the oaths are very important to God, but the ones that they make amongst themselves and the ones they make with other people. You know, oaths and covenants are, are very important to God. And this is really a story about character the character of the Israelites, the character of Joshua and the character of these people that showed up and used deception to try to latch on to the prosperity um, and the, the safety of the Israelites. Okay. The next verse says, as we go along in in Joshua chapter nine, we're starting back at chapter, chapter uh, Joshua 9, 16, and it starts with three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors, that these guys just live right next door. <laughs> okay. They didn't come from far away, wear out their sandals, it's, their bread got moldy and their, their clothes got worn out. Mm-mm-mm. They were just from right down the road, okay? Three days later. Now, what else happens in three days? I always say a lot can happen in three days. What else happens in three days? Right? Jesus rose from the dead, came out of the tomb, right? Victory, victory, revelation, okay? The devil thought he had Jesus. He thought he had him when Jesus died on the cross. He was like, Hey, I got him. (laughs) Right. Three days later, boom. Right. Revelation truth. The whole reason behind what God did. Okay. Three days. We see Jesus Christ in every single one of these chapters. We have to understand that the whole Old Testament has got signs of Jesus and signs of how God reveals things to us. How does he reveal things to us? So three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So the Israelites set out and on the third day came to their cities, Gibeon. Kephira, Baroth, and Kerith, Jerim. 
but the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord God of Israel. Then the whole assembly grumbled against the leaders, but all the leaders answered, we have given them our oath by the Lord, the God of Israel, and we cannot touch them now. This is what we will do to them. We will let them live so that God's wrath will not fall on us for breaking an oath that we swore to them. They continue, let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers in the service of the whole assembly. So the leader's promise to them was kept. You know, that says a lot about the character of the Israelites and the, and the character of Joshua. They stood by their oath to the people, even the the uh, the Gibeonites, even though they realized that they lied to them, that they were deceived, they made an oath to them, okay? You know, God was telling them to go and conquer these cities and he would be with them, okay? So realistically, they were going against what God told them to do because they did not uh, confer with God. They did not... Um, uh, when these people showed up, they didn't say, Lord, okay, what's going on here? What's happening? So I got thinking about this. And I, after I saw the three days, the whole three days thing, and I just got this whole three, three, three. And I just, I just asked the Lord to give me some revelation on this, because this is going to be the teaching for you on how to make a decision when an opportunity presents itself, if it's good, bad, if it's from the Lord, and what, what you need to do to move forward. So first, what you need to do is highlight this three days later thing. You know, I think it's really important that we highlight Joshua 9.13 and make a note in our Bibles right here how the truth is revealed. Truth is revealed three days after the opportunity presents itself, okay? And that is the way God operates with us. God is true to his word. This is a lesson, a lesson. And um, this is just a really good verse to highlight and return back to uh, when you're trying to make a decision about something and you're not sure. And then I wrote up this really cool little outline. It's not really super neat, but okay. So I don't know if y'all can see this. All right. Okay. So three days brings revelation, right? The three steps is ask, seek, knock, which is in Matthew 7, 7, 12. We are told to ask, we are told to seek the Lord, and we are told to keep knocking until we get the answer. Keep knocking. Ask of the Lord, seek of the Lord, keep knocking until we get that answer, which is revelation. And the three requests that we ask of God, we ask for discernment. We say, Lord, you know, repeat after me, discernment. I want discernment. Lord, give me discernment to see. Take the veil off of my eyes. I got a veil here, right? So, so many of us are walking around like this. You know, we're seeing things through our earthly eyes, right? We're seeing things through our earthly judgment. But we can ask the Lord to take the veil off of our eyes, peel back those layers, and give us discernment to see things with his eyes, with his eyes, okay? So you want discernment, right? So you, to see, all right? You want wisdom, wisdom. Solomon did not pray the richest man that ever lived, the wealthiest man that ever lived did not pray for riches and wealth. He prayed for wisdom, right? He prayed for wisdom. Okay. So discernment and wisdom brings the grace of God that we need. We ask for grace. Okay. So father, I ask you for discernment in this situation. I ask for wisdom in this situation. Is this situation from you, Lord? And I ask you for grace, Lord, grace while I'm in, I'm waiting for this decision, right? So I'm not sitting here stewing over it, stewing over it, stewing over it. In the meantime, you know, that situation is, is knocking on your door, pounding at you, you know, ooh, you know, and, um, and then that will bring the revelation you need. Okay. God will always reveal if that situation is good or bad. He will bring confirmation to you. You've got to keep your eyes open for that. That's why you ask for discernment first. The discernment will help you see 
what God is showing you. Wisdom will help you understand what God is showing you. As for grace in the time of waiting, right? God, give me grace, protect me in the situation, cover me, right? And then your revelation will come just like it came for the Israelites when they were uh, with, with the Gibeonites. No matter what, it's going to come. That revelation is going to come whether it's good or bad. And then three days later, you're going to be like, oh, crap. did I, I really screwed up. I did not inquire of the Lord in the situation. And now I've got myself into a mess that I can't get out of. Just like the Israelites did but they couldn't go back on their word and they were stuck with these people. So what could they do? Right. You know, and, and they had, they knew they had deceptive people that had to come into their camp for forever that, that infiltrated into their camp. These were, these were people of bad character, you know? So do you want that in your business? Do you want that in your family? Do you want that in your household? I mean, do you want, I mean, that's the things you guys really need to take from this chapter. Okay. All right. So I think this is going to be a really good go-to for many of us who are trying to discern a situation and see if it's good, see if it's good. And if it's of the Lord, you know, it's really hard to be patient. Sometimes we just want to just grab that opportunity without taking time to pray and taking time to wait on the Lord. And that's why you ask for that grace. you got to ask for that grace because God will give you that peace and comfort from the Holy Spirit while the decision is 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 coming at you. <laughs> Got this funny story, you know, impulsivity. So many of us are impulsive, and we live in a country where it's just gotta have it now, gotta have it now, gotta have it now, you know. And um, we we just don't think, you know. And and um, I you know I had grew up in a very high energy Italian family. I'm going to tell this funny story about my mom. I know she's probably watching and mom, I, I know you're a good sport and I know you'll let me tell this funny story. My sister, my sisters and I tell this story all the time and it's so hilarious. But, um, my mom was at a party at, um, her work, her workplace party at uh, the boss's house. Now this was the boss's house and um, they had all of their nice downstairs, all redone, all nice. And these people were really into fitness and things like that. And um, my mom was at the party and sometimes she just gets a little over excited and, you know, a little, she's a very energetic person. And she saw this, like this round thing. Okay. This round thing with like a leather cover over the top of it. Well, she thought it was a trampoline. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I tell the story. I, I just have to talk about stopping and waiting and using discernment before you go for it. But anyway, she thought it was a trampoline. Well, it wasn't. So she's like, she didn't know that, but she, she just, she just thinks and does, you know, sometimes she just doesn't stop and think, of course she's better now, but, um, she ran up to this, this round thing and she was like, Hey, look, this looks like a trampoline. And she goes and she goes to jump on it. And they're like, stop, no, stop. And she's in midair. And she jumps on it and crashes through it. It was a jacuzzi tub <laughs> with water in it. <laughs> and it had a leather cover over the top of it. You know how like they, those, some of those people have those jacuzzi tubs and they have like those padded leather covers over them. Yeah. Or nylon or whatever it was. Well, to my mom, it looked like it was a trampoline. <laughs> Of course she was mortified and she was so embarrassed and we, we tell that story and we laugh about it all the time, but you know, it's a great lesson for all of us to learn. We've all been embarrassed by our impulsive decisions. We've all been embarrassed or, you know, literally came back to bite us in the butt with things that with people, with things, with situations that we have done without inquiring of the Lord, or even just taking a minute to step back and go, wait a minute, let me scope out this whole entire situation a little bit deeper before I run and jump. 
<laughs> okay. So these are things that, you know, you'll learn as you go on your journey and your journey is going to speed up if you slow down a little bit. Okay. You're going to reach your destination faster and better and stronger if you step back when you're making each decision and, and looking at the whole picture. All right. So Joshua. <clears throat> Then Joshua some of the Gibeonites and said, why did you deceive us by saying we live a long way from you when you actually live near us? You are now under a curse. You will never be released from service as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, well, your servants were clearly told how the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you the whole land and wipe out all its inhabitants from before you. So we feared for our lives because of you. And that is why we did this. So we are now in your hands. Do to us whatever seems good and right to you. So Joshua saved them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. That day he made the Gibeonites woodcutters and warrior carrier, water carriers for the assembly to provide for the needs of the altar of the Lord at the place the Lord would choose. And that is what they are to this day. Okay, so here's the thing, all right? And, and this, is, this is for some of us who may um, try to use, uh, use deception to get ahead. Like I said, I was in sales for many, many years, you know, and, and uh, lots of times we would, we would um, paint a pretty picture, right? We would fluff things up. We would make them look better than what they are, right? To, to pull in, right, that sale. You know, and a lot of this is being done all over the country, all right, the, and, and, and advertising and marketing, um, you know, people go and they, 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 they feel like they're buying a certain thing and when they get a home, that's not it, you know, so, so deception is being used all the time in, in, our, in, our, in our culture, Deception is being used all the time. And sometimes we don't even think twice about it because, you know, it's being used in marketing. It's being, you, you know, models are being airbrushed on the covers of magazines. And, you know, deception can be very, very destructive. Deception can be very, very destructive. You know, it, it starts to add up. It starts to add up. So, Joshua said this curse over them because they were deceptive people and because of their deception, they would never prosper like the Israelites. They would be stuck as servants of the Israelites all the days of their life and, and, and even their descendants, you know? So if they had taken a different approach and had approached with honesty and said, we we, if they had told Joshua what they told them, what he, what he, they said in verse 24, Joshua probably would have taken a complete different approach with them because what they were doing were, was they were acknowledging the Lord. They were acknowledging Moses. They were acknowledging the commands, commands of the Lord. And, you know, Joshua may have, have brought them in the same way he brought in um, uh, Rahab's family, okay? But they didn't approach it well. So they got cursed. And, you know, deception <clears throat> is not your friend. It might fluff things up for a little bit. It, it might get you in the door, but it's never going to get you to the point where it's going to prosper you to where the Lord wants to take you. Because deception is of the enemy. And let's face it, guys, okay? He, he doesn't want you to reach your promises. He wants to keep you in deception. He wants to keep you in a state of constant confusion. He wants you to be always chasing after everybody else instead of chasing after God. Amen? Okay, so I think the biggest lesson here with all of this, my friends, is to take these three days in, in a situation, no matter how bad you want to make that immediate decision. If you're going to go buy a car, if you're going to go buy a house, if you're going to um, hire somebody for your business. You know, I remember one time 
I really needed an, an assistant for my business. I really need assistant. I was really overwhelmed with a lot of work and I really needed an assistant. And, um, so, um, I went on one of those temp, those temp websites and the first lady that looked pretty good to me, I was like, listen, can you meet me for lunch tomorrow? I really need to hire someone quickly. I'd love to just connect with you as soon as possible. And so she was like, yeah, great. So, um, I, I really didn't look over her resume very deeply. I just saw that she could ba do the basic things that I needed. I really didn't go in deep and I didn't inquire of the Lord. I was just very, very trusting. And so I met her for lunch and, um, you know, she seemed okay, you know, and, but she was just kind of like, um, well, you know, um, what am I going to get paid and what am I going to do this? And instead of focusing on, you know, what it was that was the core value of my company. But, you know, I just was, I, I just was so blinded, right? The veil was over my eyes. The veil was over my eyes. I was so blinded about what I needed right now, what I needed right then. I needed to get to my goals and to my promise so fast with my business and what I wanted that I, I wasn't seeing through everything. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't really looking at the big picture and I definitely didn't inquire of the Lord. So um, <clears throat> the next day, you know, I said, you know, can you start pretty soon? And she's like, yeah. And so the next day she reaches out to me and she's like, well, aren't I going to get paid for my job interview for that hour that we spent in the restaurant? And I thought to myself, get paid for a job interview? Who gets paid for a job interview? So, so that was a red flag, but I let it go because I had already kind of made a commitment to her to, to come and, and work for me. And, you know, she worked for me for several months and it was just all of these problems that just kept happening. Okay. And it was always like, I need more hours and I need more pay for this. And I need more, 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 more. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you know? And so she, she just ended up stressing me out even more than what I was needing. I was more stressed out <laughs> with the assistant help than I was before because, she was making herself so needy for everything that she needed in the situation instead of providing what I needed for the job as her, her boss and as her leader, you know? So remember, if you see those red flags in the beginning, they're, they're there for a reason, right? If they strike you like, wait a minute, something strikes you in your spirit and goes, wait a minute, there's something, you know, I don't, I shouldn't jump into this too fast. Maybe I need to just sit back, wait three days, inquire of the Lord, ask, seek, knock, give me discernment, Lord, give me wisdom. Is this the right person? Give me the grace that I need, right? And that will bring revelation if this person is not the right person or the right situation. So let's, let's pray, my friends, let's pray. Let's pray that these situations um, that you're in are, are good, are good ones, and that the ones that are not good are revealed. You know, um, you might be praying over your, your children's friendships right now. You know, you might be praying over uh, your, if your work is right for you. Maybe you are searching for work right now, you know. Um, you might be deciding what kind of career you need. You know, um, maybe you're deciding what you need to do as far as your life's purpose. I mean, many of us are at that point right now. And that's one of the, the most important things that I love to coach people on is helping people get clarity of purpose and God will help you get that clarity. Right. And that's the most important thing. So receive this prayer tonight, my friends, whatever it is that you are needing in your life to make a decision on, okay? And this is, and receive it now for whatever the next opportunity is that, that, that comes. Maybe you're praying for um, the right person to, to come into your life and help you with a project, okay? So, so whatever it is, just receive this right now. And even if you don't have a situation right now, receive it so that when it comes, you're ready. You're prayed up, you are prayed up. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friends tonight. I thank you for this, this incredible strategy, Father God, in your word. And it, uh, helping us understand, Father, that you have given us the steps. You have, you have shown us that even from the mistakes that your beloved Joshua made and your beloved Israelites made, that we can learn from them. So that our walk and our promise that we will know and understand how to come before you with these situations, Father, so that we can, can, can come quickly, come quickly into what you have called us to do and into our promises, Father God. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, to send your Holy Spirit to every single person that is hearing my voice, Father. That if they are in a situation where opportunities have been presented to them or very soon opportunities will be pre presented to them, Lord, we ask you, Father, to give us the discernment through your Holy Spirit to see if these opportunities are from you. We ask for your divine protection and your grace over us, Father, that these, these opportunities will, will, if they are not good opportunities, that they will be driven out quickly and we will realize quickly that the, these are deceptive and they, that they are from the enemy and we will walk away from these situations quickly. But Father, if they are from you, Father God, we ask you for the wisdom and the discernment and the grace to know if these are good or bad, and if these are from you, Father God. And we ask for revelation. We ask for revelation. Revelation, reveal, reveal. If there are red flags that, that we need to see and lift those veils off of our eyes and give us eyes to see, give us eyes of understanding so we can see the red flags if these situations are not good for us, if these opportunities are not of you, God. So we can quickly get away from them and move away from them, Father God, and, and move into and back in line for what you have for us, Father God. So Father, we repent for any decisions that we have made or any deals that we have come into that, um, or any covenants or oaths that we have come into that, that we did without consulting you first, Father God, that we came into without uh, prayer and, and, and without your blessing, Father God. And we ask you to put the blood of Jesus on that, Father. And then we ask you, Father God, for your grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And we ask you to renew, renew us into the new things that you have for us, the new opportunities, the new doors, and the people that you have for us, Father God. Move those, the people that are not meant to be in our lives out and move the people that are meant to be in our lives in, move the opportunities and the situations that are not meant to be in our lives, that are not part of your will out and move the situations and the opportunities that are of your will, Father God, in. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and woohoo, yeah. Listen, my friends, this is a race. This is a journey. Okay, and we have to use discernment and we have to use strategy. And the Holy Spirit is our crew chief. He is our crew chief. And, you know, he's here to help us. He's right here. He's, he's like, if you're driving in a car and you are needing directions and you, you know, you whatever, he is right there. He's got the directions. He's got everything. He's got every answer. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. He wants to help you right? Don't ignore them. Just don't just go into deals or go into situations or jump on that hot tub when you think it's a trampoline with, <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> I really sorry, mom. <laughs> but it's the best example I can use. <laughs> I love you, mom. Um, don't jump into something like, you know, sit back and say, Holy Spirit, wait a minute. I don't care if you're sitting in the car dealership and they're like, here, sign on the line, right? No, go out in the parking lot, go to lunch, do whatever. Give yourself some time to inquire of the Lord and use the three days. I mean, God give us, gives us the answer right now. 
He gives us the answer right now. So listen, my friends, I love you. Remember, all of heaven is cheering you on. Go to AnnaMarieStrawhand.com. If you need prayer, if you're really stuck, you really feel like maybe you've taken some wrong term, turns or you've let yourself get into some bad situations, um, you know, we'll, we'll pray you through it. We will pray you through it. God wants to help you through. You know, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. That's why Jesus came. That's why he came, right? To bring us out of sin and, and bring us back to the Father. And so we could have this grace and we could have this mercy and the Holy Spirit could come and help us. We're not alone, friends. We're not alone. And if you want one of these really cute stickers, I love heaven is cheering you on. Uh, hit me up on Facebook Messenger. Tell me you need a sticker. Give me your address and I'll mail it right out to you. And then go to annemariestrawhand.com for prayer request. Um, if you're needing coaching, if you're needing anything, if you are close or you're, you don't know what to do, we'll help coach you through it. We've got great coaching programs and I, I just love it's the most rewarding thing in the world for me to be able to coach people into uh, what God has called them to do. And it's, it's, it's a huge blessing for me to be able to do it. So listen, my friends, I hope, I hope this class helped many of you tonight uh, and we will see you next week. Um, and we will be this next chapter of Joshua is so cool. This is like my favorite my favorite chapter, Joshua 10, when the sun stood, stood still. And we're going to be talking about time and how God can help you with time. You know, time is a big thing for everyone. And this is really going to pertain to many of you uh, right now who are needing um, that time expedited or a situation um, of time to stand still for you while you deal with things. And, you know, God is so good. He's so good. And he shows us in his word how he creates solutions for every one of our situations. He wants us to be victorious, friends. God wants you to win. He wants you to come into your promise. He wants you to be victorious. Remember, be bold and courageous because all of heaven is cheering you on and I'm cheering you on. I love you guys. Have a great week and don't forget to stop back here because you never know. I might get a word. God might want me to tell you guys something important uh, that he'll just drop things in my spirit sometimes. And I'll be like, I got to tell my friends that somebody's needing this word right now. And I'm just so grateful that um, he's using me in this way. And uh, I want to help you guys. All right. I love you guys. Have a great night. Bye.